impacts on the community. So let's cut to the chase here. What, what can the government do to improve the situation, to end the cruel export, but without losing jobs, so that it's sort of good for the animals and good for the economy as well? That's a really good question because we want to see a solution that is good for animals, good for farmers and good for the Australian economy. And what we want the government to do is actually implement some strategies that have been very clearly defined and not defined just by animal welfare groups but through independent research which actually shows that the gov government policies at the moment favour live exports over the chilled meat trade. There are subsidies on live export animals, which means the live export industry uh, is subsidised, their trade is subsidised, but then chilled meat going to the Middle East attracts tariffs, so they actually have an extra burden. So what we want the Australian government to do, and it'll involve... Level the playing field. Level the playing field, that's right. Mm. And that involves changes to our domestic policy, yep. but then also our government has a role in lobbying the importing countries to make sure that we're looking after jobs here in Australia. Okay. Um, is it important to, in your sort of advocacy, to get sort of um, champions of the cause? So I want you to talk about um, Princess Alia in Jordan and maybe some of the um, politicians that you've met here in Australia that are sort of supporting the campaign. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the important thing about Princess Alia is that she, she shows that people in the Middle East do care about animals. Not only do they care about animals, because they don't like to see them suffering, but they care about the treatment of animals because of their religion as well. And Princess Alia has been an outstanding spokesperson for the welfare of animals. And we've also seen people like that here in Australia. Just last week, I was in Western Australia where I met with two senators and one Labor MP talking about the issue of live exports. Now these people are absolutely opposed to the live export industry. They see the benefits of the ch increasing chilled meat, they see the benefits to animals and they also see the benefits to jobs in their own electric, in That's their right. own town. That's so right. it's, a, it's a twofold thing. We're motivated obviously because we want to protect animals but a lot of politicians are now motivated because they want to protect jobs in their own electric. All right. So how do you see the Body Shop helping with the Humane Chain campaign in well, these four weeks that we've yeah, got? Yeah, well we are absolutely thrilled with the Body Shop support for this campaign. We see this as just a massive, massive step in our campaign. What we want to do with the Humane Chain is to create this visual show that people around Australia are opposed to live exports and we've used the chain because obviously it, it's red, it's bright and it's very visual and online you can see on the map of Australia that the more people that join up to be opposed to live exports you see the chain move around the country. So at the moment we have around 17,000 people but we see the body shop support being able to, for us to take that really to the next level in terms of people joining the chain but then also in terms of getting this chain out there in the community, getting people, vets, politicians, everyone are aware that the chain exists and for Kevin Rudd and Tony Burke to be aware that this chain Tony Abbott. Tony Burke. Oh, and Tony, Tony Burke. Abbott. Who's Tony Burke? Oh, he's the Minister for Agriculture. I didn't know that. Mm, yeah, unfortunately. He's okay. a Minister and for he's, Agriculture. He's been a bit um, wishy-washy on this subject. He's totally in support of live exports. We've had a, a it's been basically a closed door policy for animal Doesn't welfare want to groups. Can't get in and, and even sort of your um, meat processors and unions can't seem to get time with him yeah. either. So he's no interest. Tony Burke. So Tony if Burke. there are any body shop people watching out uh, out there in Storeland and um, your local MP is Tony Burke, then you've got an extra little job to do, helping to sort of knock on his door and, and say, hey, stop, stop this cruel export trade. Exactly, and that's why people meeting with their own MP is so important, because when you're an animal welfare group, the MP can say, maybe I'll meet you, maybe I won't. And in Tony Burke's case, it's, yeah, I won't. Yep. Um, but if that person is your MP, you can write the letter to them, they represent you in Parliament, and you've got a right to bring your concerns to your MP and have them talk about them on your behalf. So particularly if it's uh, Tony Burke or anyone in the, in the Labor Party, it's Labor Party policy to support live exports, and that's what needs to change. Awful. Well, and it's an election year, so this is the, the opportune time to do something about it. Mm -hmm. Um, so the way I understand the campaign is going to run in stores for us is that we want to get, um, I reckon, at least double the amount of people on the humane chain um, as we have at the moment. So there's 17,000 at the moment and I think we can do well over 20,000. What we're going to be doing is asking them to sign the petition to join the, the, um, the, the uh, humane chain. But then what's going to happen is that um, 
uh, Whisper's going to send them a, out uh, an email with a customized letter with their MP already selected based on their postcode. So it cuts out a lot of the, you know, mucking around trying to find out who your MP is, uh, which, you know, I know is, can be a bit of a, a barrier for people wanting to do something but don't know how to start or it's just too hard. So Whisper's going to send them that information and say, your local member is blah. Here's a letter, you know, or suggested letter already prepared. Um, now we just need you to sign it, print it, put a stamp on it and send it away or email it. Yeah. Um, and so basically getting people to actually do the advocacy that we, we necessarily, you know, we, is so necessary and it's so much more powerful, don't you think, to um, have a letter or even better, uh, you know, visit your MP than just to, you know, sign a petition. So it's kind of like a two-phase process. I hope that, you know, you that, get yeah, that. that. That's yeah. exactly right. So joining the humane chain is really the first step. That's important because the larger the number of people in the chain, the better. But even more importantly, we need people to actually contact their local MP. Either in a letter is, is fantastic, particularly one that's been personalised. But even better than that, if you can sit down, if we can encourage people to sit down with their MP and talk face to face with that MP, we can supply footage and materials, etc., so that that issue is taken right to that individual person. And they can't shy away from it. They can't throw it in the bin or what have you because you're sitting there in front of them and you're talking about something that you care a lot about. And it's interesting because we've done research into it and the majority of Australians are opposed to live exports. And we've got this crazy situation where tens of thousands of animals die, the majority of Australians are opposed to the trade, we're losing jobs in Australia, yet the Labor Party continues to support this trade.